Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be making an apple and blueberry cider. I'm using the turbo cider method which means using apple juice from concentrate which only contains apple juice from concentrate and no harmful preservatives. Check out the Facebook group Turbo Ciders for all for more ideas for different recipes as well as my apple juice. I'm going to be using my proteins blueberry flavour flavour drops. These are really strong flavoured, no sugar, uh, virtually no calories and they're excellent. I'm using two different kinds of yeast, a little bit of blue, Bulldog Cider yeast and some Lalvin EC1118 Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider yeast, 300 grams of brewing sugar, 4 tea bags and 500 ml of spring water curry not included. So I'm going to begin by making a pan of tea from the four tea bags and the 500ml of spring water. The tea adds tannins which gives it a bit of extra flavour and body. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, but I do think it works out okay when I do use it. So while I'm waiting for the tea to boil, it's time to get the apple juice into the container, into the fermentation vessel and today I'm using a Tesco 5 litre water bottle. This is why it's called Turbo Cider. It's a lot quicker doing this than it is using apples. And in all honesty, I think it tastes better. I've got two litres of apple juice in so far. Now I'm going to add the My Protein blueberry flavour. I'm going to add three full pipettes full into the fermentation vessel. There we go. I'm now going to add a third litre of apple juice. I'm not going to put any more juice in at the minute because I need to add the tea and the brewing sugar and that's obviously going to increase the physical volume so I'll wait until I can see how much space there is left before I decide whether or not I'm going to open up another apple juice. So my tea is boiling now, I'm just going to give it a mash with a potato masher, get all the flavours and tannins out of it, which is what I want. I'm then going to remove the tea bags and give them a bit of a squeeze against the side of the pan, just to get the remaining juice out of them. My tea is now boiling away, so I'm going to pour my 300 grams of brewing sugar into it. This is very fine and it dissolves reasonably easy. I'll need to give it a stir, but it won't take very long for this to completely clear. It's a beautiful colour. Okay, the tea is done and the sugar is melted so the heat can come off. So I need to add this into the fermentation vessel also. I've got plenty of room left, so I'm going to add the other carton of apple juice also. I'm now going to pour some of this mixture into my hydrometer jar so I can take the original gravity, which will allow me to work out the alcohol by volume at the end of the brew. That also leaves me a nice bit of space on top here. Because when I have the yeast, this will form a Krause and the former head on top, and that space should be enough now for that to grow. I need to take the original gravity at 20 degrees centigrade. It's currently a little bit warm, so I'm going to let this cool down and carry on with the rest of the brew in the meantime. So the next step in my brew is to add my yeast. I've got a very small amount of this Bulldog Cider yeast left, so I'll add that first. There's probably about a third of a teaspoonful there. I'm going to supplement the Bulldog yeast with this Lalvin yeast. It's tried and tested, I use it a lot. So I've probably got just over a teaspoon altogether, or maybe a very generous heap teaspoon between the two yeasts. And you can see the yeasts falling through that brew. It's warm, it's sweet, they'll have a very enjoyable time in there. And that's what makes the alcohol. 
Bit of a tip for you here, if you're using a plastic fermentation vessel like this one, which is squeezy, it can act like a lung. So when you push the bung and the airlock in, it can expel air out. But when you release that, it'll breathe in and it'll suck the water out of the airlock into your brew, which can damage your brew. So I always get the bung in, the airlock in, then I move this to where I want it to be, then I'll add the water inside the airlock. I've now got the water in the airlock and the fermentation vessel in place. Next to its brethren, I've got my blueberry, a Vimto flavour cider, cherry bakewell and apple and cranberry. I've done recipes and videos for all of these flavours as well, so have a look on my channel. I've got the temperature down to 20, so in goes my trusted hydrometer. And I'm starting off with an original gravity of 1.064, 1064. So that's it for now, folks. I'll catch you in a couple of weeks' time when fermentation's over and it comes to the clearing stage. See you then. Good morning from the kitchen, folks. It's blueberry cider bottling day. Yes, bottling day, not clearing day, because as you can see, it's beautifully clear, all on its own. Nature has done its thing for me. Uh, this has been in the fermentation vessel for seven weeks. It fermented for about five of those weeks, and then for the last two weeks, it hasn't really done anything at all. Uh, so I've just left it naturally to clear on its own. I'm hoping that the yeast that will still be suspended in this, that you can't really see because it's microscopic, will be enough uh, with the priming sugar in the bottles for it to carb and have a nice fizz. So I need to prime my bottles and I'm using a mixture of household typical granular sugar and brewing sugar mixed together. And I'm putting one of these in each 750ml bottle and this represents a very generous heaped teaspoon. I'm also going to back flavour each of the 750ml bottles with an entire pipette of the My Protein Blueberry Flav Drops. And this should guarantee that the cider has a nice blueberry taste. So it's time to unscrew the bung and pop the siphoning tube in. I'm holding the tube in place with this clip. It's right down into the sediment, but that's fine because the first bit that comes out is going into the hydrometer jar. Let's do it. And into the bottles. <laughs> Smells nice, very cidery. I'm getting some little bits of sediment through, but I'm not going to worry, it will settle in the bottom of the bottles. I'm definitely going to get six 750s, that's good. And there we go, exactly six 750s and a disaster averted. So there's my bottles, there's my bungs, and I now need to get these into the bottles. So the bungs are softening in hot water. It makes them a bit more malleable because they can be difficult to push in sometimes. Although sometimes it's a dream like that. So I tend to find that the posher bottles have got narrower necks and are less plastic bung friendly. But supermarket Prosecco, fantastic. I think I'm wasting my time trying to do this one, but I'll give it a go. Oh, wow. Okay, now last time I tried to do this one with a plastic bung, no chance. I ended up putting a cork in it. So that was quite a pleasant surprise. So I've got my bungs in place. Now I need to add cages, and the cages will just keep the bungs secure and prevent any uh, missile accidents, because remember when this uh, primes, when the priming sugar and the yeast that's in suspension come into contact with each other, this is going to carbonate, that's going to cause CO2 buildup and pressure, so the cages are an essential safety feature. 
Okay, look how nice that looks as well. I think it's true to say that bottling day is probably my least favourite part of the brew process. Don't get me wrong, I take pride in what I'm doing very much and, and it is quite a meticulous and involved process. So it's just less creative I think. When, you, when you're making the brew you've got that creativity, you're doing something that you might not have done fully for the first time before. So you know you've got all them things going on in your mind but when you're bottling it's just kind of like a repetitive thing that you do every single time. So isn't that exciting? But I still take pride. Okay there's my six bottles in the sink and I now need to give each one of them a little rinse because I want to label them and I don't want any sticky residue on the bottles. So I'm just going to rinse them and leave them to stand until they're dry. So there's my bottles. I need to do the labels but before I can do that I need to find out what the final alcohol by volume is. So in goes the hydrometer and that sank nicely. And I've ended up on a final gravity of 0 0.994. 0 0.994, so that's an excellent outcome. So it's time to work out the alcohol by volume. So I take the original gravity of 1.064. I deduct from that the final gravity of 0 0.994. That equals a figure of 0 0.07. And I multiply this by 131.25 and that equals 9.18%. That's a fantastic result. That's a really good strong cider. We're into the rocket fuel territory. I'll just label it at 9.2%. So I've got my labels made up in a simple template in Microsoft Word and I'm now just going to print these off. So I've just got my bottles now laying flat so I can get the labels on. I like to try and make them look nice. And some of these are genuinely really beautiful bottles. It's such a shame that most will get wasted either in the bin or hopefully in a recycling bin. But I mean they're absolutely gorgeous bottles. Look at the design, look at the work and it's gone into this. I mean, it's really fantastic. And there we have it, folks. So welcome to the conservatory, folks. I'm going to condition my ciders in here. It's a south facing conservatory and it gets very warm in here. And there's a little poppy down there wanting to come in. And I've usually uh, been putting them in this box just here, but this is currently full of other conditioning ciders and beers. So I'm just going to slide them next to this box under this table so they're out of sunlight. And they'll stay down there for two weeks. So there they all are. Are you happy with this as well? Yeah, just inspect. Very good, thank you Poppy. Okay, the next film will be in two weeks time when it comes to the opening and tasting. So I'll see you then folks. Good evening from the kitchen folks. Tonight it's blueberry cider opening night. What will it taste like? What will it look like? What will it smell like? Will it have a fizz? Let's find out. So I've got to get the cage off, which is going to be a bit of a mission. I think this cage has ended its natural life. A bit tight, a bit thin. It's ready to snap. You've served me well. Thank you, cage. Good cage. Right. So there's not any visible signs that the bung has lifted so will I have a pop when I open it? I don't know. I hope I do but I don't know. Let's see what happens. Oh that sounded nice. There's vapour and I can smell blueberry. I can smell it. I can smell blueberry. Quite excited as you can tell. How does it pour? How does it look? 
Oh, we've got sparkle. Look at this. Listen. It does smell like blueberry. It smells like a blueberry pie. Blueberry and apple pie. That is absolutely gorgeous. Flipping egg, it does not taste like 9.2%. It's between medium sweet and sweet. I am not used to that level of sweetness for that strength. Wow. Really, really good. Probably my favorite, my protein flavor drops flavored cider yet. Better than the vanilla. And that's saying something. Incredible. I could sell this. I could actually sell this. It's gorgeous. Wow. Anyway, cheers, folks. I'm going to enjoy this tonight. And I'll catch you on the next brew. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden, and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.